So, um, after the first video, you should have followed the instruction to place all the columns. Our next task is actually trying to place those um, column pads, which are also called a spray footing. Um, before you do that, I would like to uh, double check with you that your dimension is actually correct as well as your elevation. So if you could log into those columns, which is on the edge of the um, unit B area. This area is the unit B area from column 9, 5, 6, 7, 8. So between column 4 and 5, you will see the elevation change from 16 feet 4 inches to 16 feet 9 inches. On the second bay, which is grid line B, you should have 15 6 inch for AC unit and 15 feet 11 inches for um, B unit. On the back, which is the, uh, the secret line, you should see uh, there's only four columns okay, in the middle. And of unit B and the elevation um, top of the elevation of the columns are supposed to be 15, one, um, 15 foot 1 inches. So make sure you have all that available. Now our job is trying to get all those um, column pads correct. So to look for the column pads um, schedule, what we need to do is take a look, okay? Go to S1.2 or S1.1, but you have to make sure that S1.1 understand S1.1 is missing one column pad which does not have F7, uh, F8, 0. Um, as a matter of fact, you do have a total of six different type of um, column pads here, from F3040 all the way through to F80. Pay attention to their sizes as well as their thickness. Uh, for the reinforcement, we're not really considering the reinforcement yet uh, in this class. So our job is trying to create all those different type of uh, column pads and place them under um, the column uh, at the bottom of the columns. So, to create column pads, okay, we have a couple of different methodology. The best place to go actually will be the zero one FF and um, zero zero. Okay, um, at this view you can see all those columns. Okay, and I did um, also place the annotation, which is the name of the columns here. Okay, you can do so by going to annotate and choose tag all. Okay, and you'll find stretch column tags there. Um, if you do not have stretch ta um, tags loaded yet, you know where to go, right? Uh, go to load family and load corresponding um, column tags. You can do so by going to insert and load family, okay? And go to annotation. And uh, you can scroll down to the structural folder and find column, uh, structural column. And uh, you have one option, you can tag it directly or actually tag 45 degrees. I like 45 degrees because it would not block the column itself. Okay, so that's the type of the column tag I'm actually, I was actually uh, loading. So, um, so let's go ahead and talk about the uh, column pads. Obviously column pads are also called isolated footing or spray footing, but anyway, they are actually here under the structure, uh, structure tab on the foundation. Um, panel and you'll see isolated. Okay, so you will actually receive a prompt, uh, you know, uh, window and it's saying that there's no structural foundation families loaded. And of course, we can just go ahead and load those family. So, if we actually go to the structural foundation, the type of uh, column um, pads actually belong uh, belongs to the footing of rectangular type of uh, isolated foundation. We we'll load that one. And unfortunately, you do not have the size you want because those are generic types uh, comes with comes with Revit. So what we can do is we can customize. Okay, we can go ahead and go to Edit Type, and you can do the preview and see its actual size. Okay. Now, remember, rule of thumb: any time you modify any existing components uh, comes with Revit, it's always good practice to duplicate first. So what I'm going to name this is actually going to follow exactly what is named according to the join. Okay, so F30 um, times F40, and you can get the dimension here. You know that it's three foot by four foot, and it's 12 inch thick. Okay, so what you can do is change its width to three and uh, length to four, and uh, um, thickness to be one foot. Okay. Don't click on OK yet because we are not we're not done yet. We have to duplicate and make further types uh, um, until you finish all the six types of column pads. So 
that's actually pretty uh, straightforward. Duplicate again and call that, okay, f4.0. And don't forget to change the size to be 4.4. Duplicate again, and then call that f5.0. And now you have to change both length, uh, width and the length to be 5. Duplicate again, call it f6.0, okay. So make sure that f6 is actually 6 by 6, 12 inch. You notice that 7 and 8 actually goes to 20 inches in terms of thickness, okay? So it's always good to double check the sizes, make sure they're accurate, okay? Duplicate again, 7, 0. Don't forget to change this to be 20 inches, okay? And duplicate again. Don't forget to change that to, okay, well actually you don't have to change the thickness anymore because thickness has been changed to 20 inches. You have to change the size of that, okay? So now let's take a look at all those different sizes. You have created all six type of column pads here. Double check, okay, here I made a mistake there. The uh, seven, F7 is supposed to be seven foot by seven foot by uh, 20 inches, okay? So now we're done. Apply, click on okay. Now if you notice, Okay, in the project, in the uh, object um, selector, you will actually see all those six type of um, column pads have been created and available for you to use. As long as you save your project, okay, you save your project, and all those um, customized family will actually go with your project. You would not uh, lose them at all. Okay, you can continue to reuse them. Okay, so now our job is trying to determine, okay, according to the join. What type of column pads do we need? Um, well, it actually varies, okay? So you have all different kinds of sizes. You have F50, and uh, you have F60, okay? Um, don't forget, okay, at intersection of A1, B1, okay? Even though you do not have columns, you still have the column pads. Reason being is you do have some grout concrete masonry column and uh, how it is made. It is actually made by pouring the uh, grout into uh, pouring the grout into the concrete uh, masonry um, block cells. Okay, so you do have column pads here as well. And one of the things I made a note here is at the uh, intersection of A1, okay, there are two column pads actually kind of like overlapping with each other, but the dimensions are actually missing. Okay, um, if you go through the whole set of drawings, they, they won't have any uh, specifications regarding the size and a specs book does not even talk about sizes at all okay so on the other hand okay on the other side which is unit C you'll see the same thing here is also missing okay uh, dimensions and another thing you have to pay attention to is actually as a matter of fact okay there is an inconsistency when you look at join S1.3 you actually see this saying F60 okay but on this side, it says F80, okay? Um, we'll go ahead, okay? Whichever um, you prefer. Um, personally, I prefer to use F80, uh, F80 anyway. Um, bigger size actually gives more, um, you know, safety factor. So that's the things that you have to pay attention to. And don't forget the placement, okay? Um, because the footing on the top of footing is supposed to be minus 8 inch and then minus 1 foot 4 inch. So technically, the exterior pads have a lower elevation compared with the interior pads. Okay, But Rabbit is able to actually help us uh, to automatically detect where the column, uh, the bottom of columns are. So they will automatically attach the column pads at the bottom of the columns, which saves a lot of time. Okay, uh, In terms of placing those column pads, even though they are different types, my recommendation would be always go ahead and place, okay, choose any type of a column pads you created, place them all at one time, then, okay, then think about what should we do uh, in terms of changing their different uh, types. So it would be much easier, okay?